Wonder Egg Priority just doesn't stop giving us new conversations to explore with each episode. This week we enter fame and fan culture as well as self-punishment and daddy issues. It's a heavy episode, so please like and subscribe to stay up to date with Wonder Egg Priority and let me know in the comments who your favorite character is so far. After picking up eggs for herself and Nehru, I runs into our new character Rika, rolling around on the ground in pain, not knowing her injuries would carry over from the dream world. Conveniently, she also didn't know that the eggs cost money, so she attempts to borrow money from our oblivious main character despite the doll men saying they told her. They're surprised I gave her the money, but like, are any of us surprised? I text Nehru telling her about the really, really weird girl she met while buying magic eggs from doll people that let her fight monsters to drag her dead friend back to life. Yeah, the girl was weird. Then she finds Rika outside her house for some reason. Who's that knocking on my door? Because why wouldn't you trust this lady? She brings her to visit Nehru at the hospital. Of course this would be the most awkward part of her day, having her polite, reserved, yet judgy friend meet the nutcase she found on the street. I attempts to start a conversation between them. Until this hoe steals the last kiwi! But instead of eating her, Nehru just silently judges her. Roommate ate my kiwi, and so I ate my roomie. And you know what goes real good with kiwi? Touching an under a- That's tight! Squish that cat. All you need to know is to squish that cat. Once getting home, Rika meets the school counselor, and her immediate thought is, Damn girl, you got one sexy daddy, how do I get a piece of that? That's not comfortable for the cat. Of course, this isn't Ai's dad. Well, not yet. And Rika mentions that maybe Ai isn't going to school so she can get some special attention from the counselor like Koido did. Which is an extremely shitty thing to say. Once sitting down for a snack, we hear Rika tell us that the person she's trying to save isn't her friend, but some random fat fan she's using for money. Because daddy always said, if you're hot, people will pay for you. And now he's divorced. Due to recent relevations on the personality of this washed up idol, Nehru sees it fit to tell Ai all of her theories on how horrible they are. Theory number one, uh, she wants to bang older men. Theory number two, please don't be friends with her, Ai, I don't like her. But Ai being as dumb as she is, or well, we'll say innocent because that's better, when Nehru says bedroom stuff, I think she means pillow fights and sleepovers. Which she's half right about because this girl spends the night and drags us into her dream world instead. Immediately upon entry, Rika mocks Shimi's statue calling her fat. The mysterious spirit tells Ai that they've synchronized to whoever has the strongest feelings for the person they're trying to save. Which obviously Ai does not agree with, she doesn't call Koido fat and use her for money. The eggs they crack end up being old friends who killed themselves shortly after their favorite idol did. Which. Although these two are cute and bubbly is a horrifying thought, so this whole show is based around suicide, but it's still depressing that half the characters we meet have done that. They all have their own reasons, but doing it because someone you idolized or knew about it is a scary thought. I don't know how we don't constantly think about this all the time. When the media reports on a suicide, the rate significantly jumps. The aboriginal suicide rate is over three times higher than non-indigenous people. I've been close to communities where this sort of thing runs rampant, and it's such a horrifying reminder that we haven't done nearly enough to better people's lives or their health and safety. I'm really happy that in a medium like anime, we're able to have a show that can bring light to these top topics and hopefully get us talking more. The Sino evils quickly come to attack them, but while out in the open, it's hard to fight them off. I know if I was fighting demons, I would totally rather be in a confined space with limited places to run while I'm unfamiliar with my surroundings. That sounds like a grand old time. With time to break and cool down, Rika tells us more about Shimi. They met at a meet and greet when Rika was still an idol. Every time they'd meet, Shimi would give her tons of money from all the shoplifting she was doing. After finding out, Rika, surprisingly, told her to stop, but she went too far in calling her fat and saying she would never want to see her again. Shimi was eventually found dead from malnutrition, trying to be skinny and perfect like she thought Rika was. With this new context, I realizes that maybe she resented Koido a little for never really letting her into her life. With Rika directly causing or at least influencing Shimi, you could see how her feelings would be strong enough to bring them into her dream instead of eyes. Once making it to the top of the lighthouse, we meet the demon of the episode. 
a woman who was caught stalking the idol these two looked up to. While fighting the monster, she sends out a blast of gunk that quickly turns Rika to stone, leaving us with our first cliffhanger episode. Oh shit. Will I be able to beat a monster this strong? I'd assume, if they're here to torture two souls, they would be equipped to fight two saviors as well. Well, we'll just have to wait a week to find out. Wonder Egg Priority is coming for blood this season. It's trying to kick out It Invaded as my favorite original, but I don't think it's quite there yet. Oh, hey guys, it's Derek Snow, a voice actor extraordinaire. Thank you so much for watching <laughs> The Dubbed Casual, and make sure to check out more Why I Love and 1AM Anime videos.